I feel fulfilled, I have a sense of satisfaction, and full accomplishment for that beautiful lecture that I delivered today, titled Arms and Wings. Twenty-five years ago, when I started my research as an assistant lecturer, I have the dream to look into the chemotherapeutic potential of commonly consumed herbs because obviously I have noticed some therapeutic potential of our herbs. As a child, we live basically on herbs in the early 70s. As at that time, there was no orthodox drug. Orthodox medicine is still very scarce in our society. So we live basically on apps. For instance, as a child, I've got to know that uh, the leaves of mango or the pack of mango, when cooked, can help to treat, can, can lead to treat uh, malaria. Similarly, one of the apps that I mentioned today, Kuma Longa, that is Atai Lepukwa. In my dialect, it is called Ajo. As young as six years old, boy, whenever we have malaria, our parents normally purchase this yellow rice of turmeric. And then they will slice it and then uh, cook it along the stew. And to make the stew to be yellow, then the rice will to be taking it. And no abuse, we always recover very fast from malaria. So, as a child, I've known that many of these medicinal plants or herbs do exist therapeutic. Uh, purposes and today I feel fulfilled that I've used scientific approach to justify the inclusion to justify the folkloric use of some of these uh, apps so I feel fulfilled and then uh, uh, I'm happy because the response from the audience today shows that the, 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 the vital message was actually passed across today. Thank you. That was a beautiful lecture. Uh, the lecture featured on uh, a topic that is very, very important to everyone, you know, and that is about how to, uh, you know, to keep uh, well. The issue of wellness is. Uh, it's an important matter that affects everyone. But he has been able to tell us how we can use some natural facts to deal with wellness. I myself am into wellness, but I approach wellness through physical activity and exercise. And he has been able to take us through wellness using herbs and other natural remedies. And that's a very beautiful aspect about dealing with wellness. You find out that when you talk about wellness, you're able to approach wellness through several uh, interventions. And he has just dealt with one of the interventions, which is very, very natural for us. Well, uh, he's still young. He's a, he's a very intelligent young professor. And um, I believe he still has a long way to go. So we we'll just, I'll just advise that he, he doubles up and uh, keep at it, uh, expend more effort, and uh, get his work going, his research, and uh, be sure that he's able to uh, achieve some great tools in the science of uh, health and uh, wellness. Cancer development is a multi-step process 
with long gestational period. Cancer is characterized by out of control cell groups. And over 100 different types of cancers are known, which are classified by the type of cell that is initially affected. Successful treatment of cancer remains a challenge due to lack of selectivity, toxicity, and the development of multi drug resistant cancer cells. In view of the foregoing, there has been an intense search for novel anti cancer drugs. The chemical and biological diversity of plants provide extraordinary resources for the discovery of new anti cancer drugs. Some common apps with anti cancer properties are listed below. One, Caliandra pitoresis, common names, Cops Aroma, Snowflake Acacia. Why local names are today in Yoruba? In some parts of Nigeria, they call it Kule, in a they call it Oga. Place four, Caliandra pitoresis is used in traditional African medicine to manage sickle cell to manage urinary obstruction in male and also as breast engulfment, etc. Two, Salopia Ethiopica, also called Africa guinea pepper. Local names are Elbo, Alama in Yoruba. In Aosa, it's called Shima and in Igbo, it's called Kuda Plate 5. In traditional African medicine, Elbo, Alama is used to manage cough, bronchitis, female sterility, etc. My contributions to research on the anti-cancer properties of R. In order to understand the role of herbs in management of cancer, I joined Dr. Sodin Sia and the other Saka research group to the anti-cancer potential of Zalopia Ethopica Erud Alamo. Treatment of cancer cells with salopia ectopica led to growth inhibition in most cancer cells, such as MTSV, A549 cells, as well as others, especially in UMA cervical cancer cell line C33A, table 3 and figure 21. Furthermore, cancer cell death was confirmed by nuclear fragmentation. And so GO slash G1 phase accumulation, table 4, cancer cell by induction of apoptosis and cell sample arrest at the year 2011. Salopia Ethiopica is therefore promote wellness in animals through its anti-cancer activity. This data was published in particular in In the research sponsored by a six month grant from Sir Kukan Plant Agony Charity Pool Trust, London, which was discussed by the management of College of Medicine, University of Wisconsin, from Professor Paul John, where I investigated the anti proliferative and anti allergenic effects of ethanol extract of Salubria Ethopica Eruanam on prostate cancer cells, this is the in this study, Arosenka indicated the growth of this theory and Erika was not causing and also induced prostate cancer cell death apoptosis. In contrast, salopia and tropical extracts did not affect the network of blood vessels in seeking choreoadotic membrane, thus lacking anti androgenic property. These findings suggest that. Salopia and Tobuka and inhibited the growth of prostate cancer cells through a mechanism that involves the production of apoptosis at the year 2017. These findings corroborate the anti cancer activity of Salopia and Tobuka in human cellular cancer cell C33A. In order to find a possible Therapeutic intervention from arms on the mainland of cancer. We set up a experimental breast cancer model in rats. Breast cancer was induced by combined natrosuria and benzoyparin.
Breast cancer was confirmed by histology people 25. In this study, malignant rats were administered cadaver proteolysis QB, which resulted in significant decreases of organosomatic weight of malignant rat, inflammation, and oxidative stress markers, figure 26, and increase in antioxidative enzymes and DNA fragmentation, table 5. Some proteins linked to cell proliferation were elevated in the malignant rats while treatment with today calendar proteolysis attenuated these parameters, figures 27 and 28. This individual study confirms anti-cancer properties of calendar proteolysis. I do to solve Mr. Lassen. I received that one capital grant in 2017. And one of my many students, Dr. Kola was former supported by Thomas Marcel Foundation Research Grants to investigate the ameliorative effects of selected polyphenols from medicinal plants against the development of better prostatic hyperplasia, BPDH in castrated rats. I collaborated with Dr. Oloje for the Department of Veterinary Medicine extensively on these projects. We investigated the ameliorative potentials of midnight castings and aroma polycata. Some of rats were assigned to three groups, non diabetic, three non diabetic, and five months diabetic. Results of the study show that the weight of prostate decreased while fasting blood glucose. Plasma dissected hemoglobin, a number of micro related polychromatic erythrocytes increased in the diabetic crowds, table 8. Biochemical indices, namely amylotransferases, total hemoglobin C, urea, ETC, increased in diabetic crowds. In contrast, activities of acid phosphatases, antioxidant enzymes, and levels of reproductive hormone. Especially LDH, FSH, and testosterone decrease in the diabetic crowd, type 9. Historical of the prostate reveal hyperplasia, mild expressions of BCL2 and Chi67, figure 36. Mr. Mike Professor, we remarked that the reduction in the weight of prostate, changes in pH of prostatic fluid, and accumulation of zinc are factors. That suggests marked inhibition of cell proliferation and increased apoptosis in the process. The pathophysiologic mechanism to explain the changes in metabolic syndrome of DL may therefore include alteration in prostatic functions, reduction in reproductive hormones, and induction of oxidative stress. Popo et al. 2017. This study was published in the Nigerian Journal of Physiological Sciences. We started research for national hypoglycemic agents as alternatives to synthetic ones. In one of our studies, Kulagawa, again, from Grazina Kula 6, was separated into three fractions, fraction 1, 2, and 3. In normal glycemic and hyperglycemic rats, Kulagawa, fraction 1 and 2, decreased fasting blood glucose within 4 hours of oral administration, table 10 and 11. Furthermore, Kulagawa alone produced a significant blood glucose lowering effect from day 3 to day 7 in diabetic rats, with significant decrease in the activity of glucose postmates enzyme. The enzymes that convert glucose phosphate to glucose in the reverse reaction of glycolysis. Likewise, colabiron F1 and F2 showed favorable effects of plasma lipids of diabetic rat. Significantly, it decreased the total cholesterol, triglyceride, and LDL cholesterol of diabetic rats. From this study, we confirm the anti diabetic properties as well as hyperlipidemic effects of collaboration in diabetic class. 
après la pluie en ADR, tout à fait assisté. Grazina Colassi, therefore, promote awareness via his anti-diabetic activity in Iraq, in addition to his cardiovascular effects that were discussed earlier. Conclusion. Mr. Vice Chancellor Sam, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I've explained in the course of this lecture the memoirs of my research activities for the past 25 years. On the essential, finally, for research to try, there is a need to create an environment where competitive grants, uninterrupted power supply, and well equipped laboratories are readily available. In the past, Senate research grants, SRG, are awarded to individual groups purposely to promote research. Mr. Researchers in University of Bavaria, in University of Bavaria, we happily welcome SRG vaccine. Acknowledgement. Exodus 51b. I will sing unto the Lord, for He has triumphed gloriously. The horse and the slider are just thrown into the sea. As I this acknowledgement, it is special appreciation to the Almighty God for the gift of life this evening. On the 21st of September 2017, the enemy struck a plan to take my life. The Almighty God rescued me and restored me. I'm deeply appreciative to all members of the university community, in particular, all my professors, my teachers, my students in the University of Chicago, who came to support physically and through their prayers. It is all Almighty God reward the labor of love and stop untimely death in our university. I'm very grateful to my father, late Mr. Adelton Adaramini. And my mother, Mrs. Ventura Adaramini, my first one, for their love, affection, and investment in my education. I'm very grateful and highly indebted to my grandmother, Mother Mary Fashion, for blessed, for blessed memory. Who took me? Okay, sir. My appreciation goes to Professors O.J. Ademowo and A. E. Bakari for proofreading this manuscript. Thank you, sir. I thank in a special way the Vice Chancellor, Professor K. Ademowale, and all former Vice Chancellors, in particular, Professors Isaac Ademowale and Idewola Yika, for their timely support and encouragement in my career. I want to appreciate all my friends and collaborators in within and outside you are as listed on this on the slide. Special thanks to alumni from chemistry department, you know sets of 1994 and join our high school sets of 1986. I appreciate the deep commitment, loyalty and sense of duty of my present and former students and their spouses as listed on the slide. I appreciate the work of RCCD family members. Specifically I thank my pastor that are here, Pastor Kavlin Dadeniji and Pastor Elijah Olatubosu, PSCP on your 18 and 20. My PSCP 20 is here, Pastor Elijah Olatubosu. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I want to appreciate all ministers of God present. I'm brethren from Peculiar People's Parish, King Peculiar Parish, King Stadel Assembly. I want to thank my mother-in-law, my mother-in-law, and all my in-laws, the Kikarabi, Odeloku, Mommy Move of Assad, Brato Ishi, and Mubi, Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, permit me to introduce to this great audience a very supportive, hardworking, beautiful, and very thousand thank you very much. support, and to this great audience, I thank you for your attention. Mr. Vice Chancellor, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, 
this is my story and this is my son. Now I to be king in time, immortal and visible. The only one God be honor and glory forever and ever. As we all know, being a professor is not the beginning of research. Delivering your inaugural lecture is just a way of telling your community that these are my research activities for this year. Now the community are now aware of what you have done. So I expect that there are going to be partnership, especially from our community. After the lecture today, I must, I'm glad to inform you that one or two companies have already approached, uh, have already approached me and they are planning to partner with us, either to investigate some of the apps they are using or they want us to help them research into some apps, especially apps with a uh, after this art properties or some apps that could be used for to treat or bandage diabetes. So that is that is the game for the lecture. It's an highly stimulating lecture. It was well researched and well delivered. And of course the inaugural lecture is not new to me. You are classmates in MSC class, both in the same units. Which is now regular work and selling out. I happen to migrate uh, to the Department of Chemical Pathology to do my own creation. And ever since we've been collaborating together, and Professor Wakada Apo is one of our very strong collaborators. And of course, if you see several of his publications and my publications, you will see that we have collaborated extensively on polyviral, on uh, drug metabolism, on receptor. We've been working together for many years. And I'm so proud of the inaugural lecture that we delivered today. This shows uh, obviously that there is always a good reward for hard work. What is it being called an innovation? The um, key title was talking about herbs and wellness. And there's another saying that says you are what you eat. And a lot of these herbs are actually different kinds of foods that are also edible. You know, he spoke about um, pepper, he spoke about bitter cola, you know, and several other things that people eat and um, that can eat. And um, what, the way I see it is that these are natural. You know, if you look at many environments, you go to places like China and Japan, a lot of times they leave, they have this, they are what they call green tea, which is a herb. I once traveled from London to Japan by plane, and there was all they were serving was seaweed and they were serving green tea. A lot of natural things. Because natural, first of all, natural foods do not have all these additives. And then God, I believe, has his way of taking care of us. So in the environment where he, you are born and you grow, in that environment, he makes sure there are things there that you can use for wellness. The more you're less likely to have diabetes and all this, what we call non-communicable disease or diseases of affluence. But they don't, they're not even longer diseases of affluence because even poor people have those diseases. If you're eating a lot of fats and pomo and um, all these unhealthy diets, the things that people throw away from the cow and all that, a lot of our local people eat those things, but they're very unhealthy. So some of the things that were very clear today is that something like as simple as bitter cola, 
that if you eat it, that it has ways of preventing blood pressure, or reducing your blood pressure, preventing diabetes, and several other diseases. And it's available all over the place. So th what, I, what I would believe is that there's evidence that these things work. We don't, shouldn't wait for a foreign country like the way they've done with bitter leaf. Because if you go to the US, you go to the shops, you have all these things there. They have ginger packeted like um, tablets. You know, they have um, um, bitter leaf. Why wait for them to? Why can't we as a people come together and look for ways of marketing what we produce? It's almost as like if we don't believe in our research. So I would expect that the government of this country, and not even government, investors, would come to the University of Ibadan and will look for leading researchers like Professor Adara Moye and ask him, take, let's take your research. Let us develop it further and make it a product. If you go to places like um, Harvard or MIT in the US, all around MIT and Stanford, in fact, Stanford, you have the Silicon Valley. Because once there's a, a major university or a research institute, the, the factory, the, the, the businesses, the drug companies, they come around so that they can tap into the research, get all those patents and convert them into products. And those products would help the researcher, the institution, the company that is converting them to products and the nation, because then you are exporting things that have been discovered from your, by your people. So what I'm trying to say is that we need leaders that really understand, leaders that have critical thinking, leaders that understand that people like us who are academics working in research institutions need support and that we are actually a way in which they can invest. They may not realize they are spending so much money on, like, um, let's say, politicians and those who are, you know, maybe the, uh, those who have been elected so much more. But we are also a, a gold mine of information that can transform the nation. And all professors here represented from the College of Medicine, America State. Today has been a wonderful day. Indeed, the day that the Lord has made. And we have all gathered here to rejoice. I can still see some of our professors there. Professor Neto, you invited all of them to come. Let's all come closer. Let's come closer. Everybody is staying there. And let's come closer, please. Our awesome, awesome guest, uh, no, inaugural lecturer. Who gave it how many years? after you calculated it to the day, the very day <laughs> your professorship was announced. Um, I must congratulate you for delivering an awesome lecture. Any interesting things that I have taken away from that lecture about the importance of herbs and medicine. Um, I have always known that Emeritus Dean I was always talking about um, bitter cola but then you mentioned several other herbs and you know as a man of god i'm sure you are very comfortable in your zone a landmine of discovery that can be used to generate income not only for yourself for your university and for your nation yes so on behalf of the entire College of Medicine, University of Ibadan, staff, students, and alumni. I want to say thank you. Thank you for being a great leader. There were excellent examples of leadership. Thank you for being a great team player. I was truly blessed when I saw the teams that you have worked with. And I hope that your teamwork, when we talk about translational research, will now move faster than before. I'm hoping that the snippets, a communique will come out from your lecture and that right out it will go into the media. The College of Medicine media team is ready and willing to promote it. But we need you to provide us. You are also an excellent researcher. 
having an H index of 38 is no joke. And you, if you notice what, they only mention 102 publications, but that's what H index is what is most important. Some people have 500 and they haven't had a lower H index, which shows that the work you are doing and the work of your supervisors, those who work with your team players, is hitting the road. And people are citing you, not one, not two, but several. And what you're also doing is you are raising the ranking of the University of Ibadan. You are the forefront. So once again, and also community, a lot of the work you're doing out there in the community. So indeed, I see the entire mission of the University of Ibadan in your life and in your inaugural. This is just the beginning. There are greater heights and there are deeper depth. And God will go with you and you will succeed. And indeed, you will live a long, rich and fulfilled life. And at the end of it, there will be all, everything will be fulfillment, fulfillment, fulfillment. Congratulations, God bless you. Professor Adaramui, you have made us very proud today. Congratulations. Thank you for keeping the standard. Thank you for maintaining the excellence as laid down by our forefathers. We are proud of you. On behalf of all of us from the Faculty of Basic Medical Sciences, delivering the Federal and Technical University, we recognize your outstanding contributions to teaching, research, and community services. Congratulations. Professor Adaramui, congratulations for delivering that very uh, beautiful lecture. And more importantly, for uh, your ability to carry on your audience. Your lecture with a lot of um, terminologies, yet very simple and uh, understandable, you know, and um, all through the lecture, I was listening because I am also in a field of wellness. It's just that my own approach is a bit different from yours because um, I approach wellness through physical activity and exercise. But the most important thing is that we must achieve wellness for our people. Whether at the, within the laboratory, or right on the field and all that. And we all have to come together at some point to drive the uh, point of awareness right there to the teaming uh, pop, uh, population. Um, awareness is, is an area that is very important to everyone. And the little, little approaches to awareness is able to save a lot of uh, people from complications that will actually have made them for life. We take them for granted at the very beginning and it gradually goes out of what is manageable. And to say that we can deal with some of these very difficult cases with what we have around us is something that we need to take seriously. And of course I, I, I believe that this lecture would, uh, because of the opportunity that it has of uh, for being uh, broadcast or disseminated to the community, I believe that people will continue to take seriously our natural uh, helps in dealing with uh, some of these cases. We all know that it's eventually, I mean, at the long run, it is very, it is cheaper to do so. And so when you see the provost, very you see how everybody talks about her energy. The reason why she dissipates so much of her energy is because she deals on um, natural things. If you go into the proof's bag, you find <laughs> if you dig deeper, you find carrots. If you dig deep, if you dig deeper, you find garden egg. And then if you go further, 
you find uh, what else does she carry along? <laughs> so that's what she that's what she eats all the time, you know. And uh, it is very helpful. It is very natural. It is very good for everyone. Thank you very much, once again, Professor Naramoy. And I congratulate you. I congratulate your family, and uh, I wish you the very best for the future. A friend, uh, we've come a long way. I thank God Almighty for sparing your life to witness today. And what an excellent presentation. I'm not surprised uh, because he has exhibited excellence in everything that he has found himself doing. We were together in India um, in one of those um, funded research. I was in uh, both in Lucknow but in different institutes. And um, Professor Darnley is a very rugged scientist. Very rugged, I see. Very, very um, pragmatic. And he, he believes when once he sets his mind on doing something, he goes for it. Um, the, the parts you've navigated in research has touched public health. Um, we're talking about a lot of communicable, non communicable diseases and the top very serious non communicable diseases of cardiovascular problems, cancer, and diabetes. So, your work is worthwhile. Your work has contributed tremendously to wellness of the public. And we're proud of you. Our prayer is that the Lord Almighty, who has taken you this far, will keep you stronger, healthier, to be more impactful to the society. Once again, thank you. God bless you. In appreciating Professor Adarame for that beautiful, wonderfully delivered lecture, uh, that gave insight into many things that people uh, were not aware of. Um, I'm not surprised. Uh, it's coming from a department that is known for excellence. And um, that department took roots from another department that is known for excellence. Thank God. Thank God he illustrated the very first part of his lecture I enjoyed, where he traced the history of our chemistry department. Our chemistry wouldn't have been excellent if you did not take the roots from this department. So I congratulate you. And I congratulate the dean and others. God bless you. And we will continue to pray for success in Jesus' name. Everybody has one thing or another to take into. And the good thing is that we are able to carry everybody along. So, once again, I say congratulations. And I want to acknowledge you to say that you work as well as done. You are well started because of your position to contribute more to knowledge, to contribute more to awareness of society at large. So, congratulations. I congratulate Professor Daramoye for delivering this lecture giving the coming from our chemistry department and the third from our unit of uh, molecular drug metabolism and toxicology and uh, i want to give thanks to god that today we are celebrating life and uh, just as uh, the provost said at the beginning of our speech that uh, we must give thanks and praise uh, to god for all things uh, some other people might wish to do this, but one thing or the other had happened to them. But we thank God today that uh, it is life that uh, we are celebrating. And uh, for giving such a good and excellent uh, lecture, as uh, Professor Lali has said, where anything that comes uh, from our chemistry department must be excellent because uh, the department uh, started with excellence and the legacy passed on to us happens to be excellence and we continue to resonate that. So we want to thank God for that. And uh, he has reminded us again of uh, the importance of the herbs and the uh, medicinal plants in the maintenance of the earth and also 
in attenuation and moderation of the diseases. And uh, the work that they have presented, especially on the beta cola, is a work that started uh, over 30 years ago. And uh, he has more or less just summarized and uh, reminded us of the need to continue to do that. I know the deputy provost is a disciple of the beta cola, as she has said. And uh, I think I'm not also surprised that the deputy provost knows because perhaps uh, it keeps uh, into our back to see all the things uh, that, are, that are there, including the ones that uh, I only know of the beta cola, but uh, he has mentioned uh, some other things. So we want to thank God and uh, congratulate uh, Swadara for you again. And as the provost has said, uh, we have done uh, well in that respect in our chemistry. We have uh, some patents, you know, on need from our chemistry already. So we are waiting, you know, for investors. We are waiting for people that want to support. We are waiting for people that want to take it to a next level. And also we are collaborating with the people in the hospital for clinical trial and also for better translation. So the market of our chemistry is ready whenever the college is ready and every other person is ready. So once again, I congratulate him for the lecture. And as Professor Adimowa has said, the work has just started. We continue to work anyway. That is, the professor said, don't uh, retire or stop in our chemistry. When we become professor, that is when the work starts. And I believe we will follow after that tradition and continue to impact the people and mentor people. Congratulations once again. First and foremost, I want to appreciate God that has made it possible for me to have been given admission to the University of Ibadan for my master's and my PhD. I want to thank the then secretary to the postgraduate school, Chief Odisa. She's now a cabinet in uh, one of the in town. I came late. 1995 after my NYC and I couldn't have access to application form for she police her, the former secretary to the police used his position to get late form for me and through that the former team who was allowed to do that admitted me to my master and that was the starting point also I acknowledge with uh, thanks the role that my supervisor at MSC and PhD played in my life, late professor Godwin Kulenoro Emeri. Baba was very tough, wet dream, brilliant man, and very strict. He is still in me, culture of academic discipline. And Baba trained me to know that all things are possible by hard work. And he exposed me to the state of art research. You cannot tell my next supervisor that this cannot be done. His answer is go to the reference section of the library. Go and bury yourself there to come out with a solution. And that has been the driving force. Again, I want to thank late Professor Edward Adeyemi. Uh, Department of Internal Medicine, United Arab Emirates University, Alain, who invited me for the first time in 2001 to UAE, United Arab Emirates, and that gave me the exposure that I needed in my life. On getting there, I saw science, how science is being done. And I also want to thank Dr. M.P.T. Gilles. The head of the panel of chemistry there at that time, who duplicated the key of his personal lab and gave me the key to this. And I was using his lab. All the kits, all the equipment, and that exposed me. Everything I needed was in MPT left lab, talking from ultrasound machine to measure it. And that really exposed me to science. I want to also thank the University of Dubai. I won't forget it. The University of Badon provided the enabling environment that helped me to really launch with the world. Because one thing, one driving force 
that really helped me in life was the fact that Vice of Lebanon is always really willing to release me for further training. And the reason is that they believe that that is the only way they, I can transfer knowledge back to the home institution here and then train my students. No wonder. You might say about that. The man is number one. Looking at the volume of academic staff as I'm talking to you, even in my department that are abroad training, you will be marvelous. And you might see or you might always allow that. For instance, my cancer research, I learned the, the cancer research in abroad. And today, I've been able to import the technology to Nigeria. Now in my lab, my students are doing cancer research work because I have the privilege to be trained abroad and I've brought it to my country. And others that have helped me in my career, especially my international collaborators and all my collaborators within UI and outside UI, we played a tremendous role in my career. And I appreciate all of them.